So I'm back. I feel like I've been gone for a few weeks, but I am back with my January and February wrap up. I knew I had to make this video before my March wrap up comes out because um, just a little hint. I am doing 30 in 30 in March, which means I am reading 30 books in 30 days in March. And it's mostly all books I own except for buddy reads and review books. And that's going to be a huge March wrap up. So I definitely wanted to get this out there. I definitely recommend following me on Goodreads if you want daily updates from me reading wise because I have posted all these books on there and little mini reviews for each of them, especially the ones that I was sent for review. I definitely have full reviews for those. So let's just start off with books I read in January. The first book I read was The Puzzle Solver and I talked about this I feel like extensively not only on my most anticipated 2021 books but I also talked about this in a TBR video I believe. But I have a full review for this book and it's basically about the scientist and his son gets MECFS, which is chronic fatigue syndrome, and it's myala... and I can't say it, <laughs> but um, it is way more serious than saying chronic fatigue syndrome, which everyone, including me, feels like that term kind of downplays the actual illness. And in this book, you learn how serious it is and how it affects a person's life. And it's really short. This one's really easy to read if you are into medical mysteries in the nonfiction genre, or if you're new to nonfiction, or if you think that you don't like nonfiction. This is definitely one you will want to pick up, even though there's science and medical terms and stuff. Really easy to follow, easy to read, and definitely recommend this one. I gave it four stars. The next book I read was Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson, and this was recommended to me by Max from Well Done Book. Um, he still has an Instagram. He's back on Instagram actually and he's bookstagramming um, but he used to be on YouTube. So this book is about Jade. She's trying to get out of her poor neighborhood. She's going to a private school. She's starting this mentorship program and it mostly touches on how not all people need support and need to be fixed and I connected with that. I remember when I moved to a new town the ESL teacher automatically showed up at my door because I swear we were the first Latino family to move to this town and she just automatically thought, wow, brown girl, she doesn't speak English. She just showed up at our house and she was like, do you speak English? Uh, and then I spoke perfect English and she was blown away. Yeah, it just reminded me of that because that kind of happens in the book too where she shows up at her house. But I don't know, it, I just, uh, even though this was a middle grade, I really connected with it and I really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend reading this one. This book I read was Thin Air and this one has been on my TBR for a little bit. I read her other book, um, Dark Matter, and I really, really loved that one. And this is kind of something similar. It's another ghost story, and it takes place in the Himalayas. It's very atmospheric. Um, that was all there, but the characters weren't there. So the characters were not well developed, I feel like. Um, but the plot, the atmosphere, the cold, the ice, the snow, that was all there. So if you like, a more atmospheric read. This is one for you. Not, not much really happens, I'll tell you that, but it will give you that creepy winter feel that if you're looking for that. But yeah, I ended up giving this three stars and um, it was kind of disappointing for me. And then after that, I read Before the Ruins. So this one I had seen that people were saying it was for fans of The Secret History, Tana French, or people who read Catherine House. I haven't read any of those things, so I just thought it was something I was going to like anyways. So in this book, we follow five friends and it kind of covers like death, betrayal, love. My problem with this one was that it was marketed as a mystery thriller, but it was more of like slow burning literary fiction. It definitely was not a thriller. Um, yeah, so kind of disappointed by that one, but I still recommend it for those who might be fans of The Secret History, Tana French, or The Catherine House, like I said. Yeah, I ended up giving that one three stars. The next book I read was Everywhere You Don't Belong. This is a coming of age story about a black man named Claude, and the book is mostly about Claude struggling to find his place in the world. The writing style was really, really unique, so I get why some people might not like this book, but I will say give this a chance 
it took me a little bit to get into the writing style but once I got used to it I really really enjoyed it and I ended up giving this one four stars next I buddy read the hunger with Alicia from Alicia reads and we both did not like this book <laughs> this one seemed like it was going to be really really good because some people I trust gave it four or five stars and it's supposed to be inspired by the Donner party but I don't know why they said that because it just doesn't seem like it was inspired by the Donner party and the worst part was that this didn't tell me like where it took place at all like it didn't tell you it was cold or snowing like there was no descriptions of the weather or the mountains or anything and that was the basis of the Donner party so yeah that's my biggest problem but there were some problematic things in it as well and I was just so glad it was over I don't recommend it I gave it two out of five stars the next one is a review book as well and it was Cormorant Lake this is about Evelyn and she steals her roommates kids and road trips to her hometown and there she reconnects with her biological mother and her foster mom I misled myself with this book because I don't know I just told myself this was a thriller and it really wasn't. This one really had like mystical mysterious vibes going on. It did go really well with the story and the author did a good job of keeping the consistency. Okay the boys here I'll show him because he's crying but here's the Christmas boy. You got your Christmas sweater on even though it's March. Wow. Okay he wants to be here but um what was I saying? So I will say that if you're a fan of Britt Bennett's books, I think that you will enjoy this one. And yeah, I still, like I said, I still recommend it and I ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Leviathan Wakes and this was very, very intimidating to me. If I had made the most intimidating books on my TBR, this would be in it. And the reason I read it was because it was my in real life book club book for the month of January. I was like, uh, I have to read this before the Zoom meeting. Of course, read it last minute. I think I read it like three days before book club and I ended up really, really loving it. So in this book, humans have kind of colonized the solar system. It's described as a space opera, but I will say it's a mystery at times, a thriller at times, fantasy at times, sci-fi at times. It's it covers everything like noir-ish at times. I did have to take a lot of notes in the beginning because this is the first real real sci-fi book I've read where there's a lot of characters, a lot going on, a lot of names for different things. The only other book that I've read that's been like that is Game of Thrones and I had an easier time with that because I had seen the show so I could put faces to names but with this one I definitely had to take notes and there were a lot of characters but once I got used to everything I didn't have to use my notes anymore and I really enjoyed this one and I definitely will be continuing with the series I know the ninth book I think comes out later this year my goal was to read like a book a month until the ninth book comes out but I don't know if I'll be able to do that if you're intimidated by this one especially like I see people that read a lot of sci-fi that are intimidated by it no reason to be intimidated by it if you're familiar with sci-fi and fantasy but if you're a beginner like me then definitely take notes because it helps <laughs> and i ended up giving this one four out of five stars really really recommend and really really enjoyed it oh my gosh he's so heavy i don't know you got heavy in old age bud if you remember when i started my booktube channel i didn't even have them yet and then i got them and they were puppies so i can't believe it now they're about to be seven this year so that's crazy he's so mild he's so calm and you're such a calm boy now huh wow but the next book i read was the nature of fragile things and this was a review book as well this one drew me in because it said it took place during the san francisco earthquake and although I thought it was going to be more about the earthquake, it was more about three stories of three different women and the stories all intertwining into one. And I recommend going into this one blindly. Do not read the synopsis because I feel like it gives away too much. But if you're into historical fiction, I definitely recommend this one. I am not a big historical fiction reader, but I still enjoyed this one and I definitely want to check out more by this author and I gave this one four out of five stars. Then I read Mina. Okay, I'm trying to do this with one hand. I buddy read this with Angel, which I will link her channel down below too. But we enjoyed this one. It wasn't
wasn't our favorite. There were a lot of things we didn't like about this one, but per usual, the art is amazing. So I have to own everything Junji Ito comes out with and I have to read everything he comes out with. This one drew me in because it just said in the back, an unknown planet emerges from inside a wormhole. So the front just made it seem like it was just going to be such a cool story. And it's it still was, but definitely not the best. I ended up giving this one 3 out of 5 stars. And then I read Becoming, which I am the last person on this planet to read this book. And I buddy read this with Ashley, which I will link her channel down below too. But you probably heard all about this because it's been everywhere since it's been out. Keisha got this for me as soon as it was released and I can't believe it took me so long to read. It was really relatable for me. I didn't think it was going to be so relatable, but some of her little moments that she talked about growing up or her childhood or her parents, I really related to. So I just had to give this five stars. It was really, really, really good. And if you haven't read it yet, definitely recommend. So this next one, I actually was approved on NetGalley, but then the publishing company reached out and wanted to send me a copy, which was so awesome because I love this one. So this one, I don't want to give away too much because it's so short, but it's about a family that's not only separated by borders, but by their immigration status. This one was so, so relatable to me because I also came to the US as a baby. Even though my family came here illegally, I just want everyone to understand that to become a resident and a citizen after that, it just takes a really, really long time. Everyone's always like, just do it the legal way. Like, why can't they just do it the legal way? Let me tell you, the legal way still takes a long time. It took me 20 something years to become a citizen so don't want to hear that from anyone okay but i really really connected with this one really love this one if you come from an immigrant family or if you're an immigrant yourself definitely definitely recommend this one for you and i first gave this four stars but because i was talking about it so much and i just kept thinking about it i ended up changing my reading to five stars so five star read so that was what i read in january so let me go through february my first book in february was when Force Meets Fate, and this was sent to me by the author himself. He saw that I had read Puzzle Solver, so he messaged me and asked me if I wanted to review his book, which is also about MECFS. And this is another medical mystery book, but this is a memoir. The other one I read was more science driven. This one is more about his life, how he dealt with the illness, how it came about, how it has changed his life and shaped him to who he is today. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars and if you do like medical mysteries or memoirs then I do recommend this one. The next one is a review book. This one is about 13 year olds growing up in a wealthy neighborhood in the Bay Area. This one was literally a whirlwind of teenage quirkiness because it was just funny at times, dark at times, sad, just all the teenage feel. If you are a fan of the Virgin Suicides then I think you will like this one. I wasn't really a fan of the book, The Virgin Suicide, so I didn't really like this one. So I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. The next one I read was His Only Wife. And my other friend, Ashley, Ashley B, sent me this one. I will link her channel down below because she also has a booktube channel. But this one, I saw a lot of mixed reviews. This one is about a woman and she is set to marry this man, marries this man, but he isn't even at his own wedding. And he ends up having Having another wife. A lot went on in this one. I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. The next one was an audiobook from the library and it was Fat Chance Charlie Vega. She is a plus size Latina growing up in white Connecticut and this is a YA kind of coming of age and it is sweet, funny, sad, uh, frustrating at times, really diverse. It had black characters, Korean characters, and it had LGBTQIA plus representation. I enjoyed this one even though I'm 30. It just took me back to that time where I was just a kid and having these little sweet relationships with people, whether it was friends or boyfriends. I will say this one has a huge, huge trigger warning for fat phobia, body shaming, and it has an extremely, extremely, extremely toxic parents. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars and if you're a fan of YA coming of age books then I definitely recommend this one. The next one I read was my favorite book for February and it was A More Perfect Union by Tammy Huff. 
Really, really love this one. Super, super underrated because I think it only has like less than 100 reviews right now, maybe less than 50. But it is a UK publisher and it is a little difficult to get. You do have to get it from the book depository, but highly recommend getting this one. So this one is about an Irish immigrant who falls in love with a black slave and this takes place during the pre-civil war era and it takes place in virginia so if you've lived in virginia or you live in virginia you will recognize a lot of these places which i have lived in virginia so i recognized a lot of the places that they named in here even though this one was really sad it was really really good i ended up giving this five out of five stars and if you're a fan of kindred i think you would like this one as well the next one is a review book as well and it is what's mine and yours this book was about two different families and their stories kind of intertwine into one. This is another one that I do recommend going in blindly. I don't recommend really reading the synopsis and I will say this one was really hard to get into. This one took me about 25% to really get into it. I really thought about DNFing it but I wanted to find out what, what was going to happen and I do recommend pushing through if you're having a hard time with this one because it is worth it. I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars because I had such a hard time with the beginning and because I didn't like the ending. The next one I read was on my TBR for years and it's Phoenix Island and the only reason I kept this one on my TBR was because it won the Bram Stoker Award for best like young adult book. So this isn't your regular dystopian. If you're into dystopians I do recommend reading this one and it's kind of a mix between Lord of the Flies and Hunger Games. It's about a boy named Carl. He's gotten into trouble so many times and the judge finally orders him to go to Phoenix Island. So Phoenix Island is a place where all these kids are sent that I guess have been so bad that they have nowhere else to send them and the place is run like a boot camp. There are drill sergeants and it's pretty hardcore and I enjoyed this one. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars and recommend it if you're looking for kind of a more original YA dystopian. And then the next three I read were volumes 3, 4, and 5 of Revival and I am just done with the series. Number one was okay. I remember I gave it three stars and I was intrigued to follow and I was still like wanting to know what was going to happen. These issues really were all over the place, like way too much going on, way too many side plots, way too many characters. I am done with the series. I will not be continuing and I gave two, two out of five stars and I gave one three out of five stars. So I had like some hope in between. So those were all the books I read in January and February. Let me know what you read those months or if you've read any of these or which ones you're interested in and I will see you in my next video which is probably going to be either one of my vlogs that I haven't uploaded because I did a vlog on reading my lowest rated books on my TBR so it might be that one or it might be just a regular reading vlog that I've also uploaded I just have to upload onto YouTube and then I have like I said my 30 books in 30 days March wrap up is going to be crazy because I am on track so far. Love, 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 love replying to comments and making friends and stuff. I know some people don't feel comfortable commenting so if you just want to let me know that you've watched just leave a pizza emoji and yeah I will see you all in the next video.